This is DRF, Race of the Day. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The DRF Race of the Day for Saturday, February the 20th is the world's richest horse race. Let's throw up the field for the $20 million Saudi Cup. You can download free Formulator Pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. Mike, it's kind of a mouthwatering matchup between the three charlatan and the eight Knicks go, two of the most accomplished, if not two of the best, older horses in the entire country. They tower over the rest of the field on form, but there's one issue. There always is a catch, isn't there? They both have the same running style, and maybe they could burn themselves out and set things up for somebody else. Uh, yeah, I guess it's possible. Um, you know, we'll see how the how the pace all plays out. They are both speed horses. To me, the bigger question um, was just whether or not um, Charlottetown would get the mile and eighth or at least be at his very best um, over a longer distance because he has one going longer, but it's not his fastest race, Dan. Um, so I felt like he had more that question to answer than anything else. I happen to think he's the more talented horse of the two. Let's talk about this field in post position order, beginning with the number four, Chua Wizard, who might be the best dirt horse based in Japan right now, winner of the Champions Cup in his final start of 2020. Now, that day, the odds on favorite Chryso Barrel, a horse that had defeated Chua Wizard on numerous times, laid an egg and is now out with an injury. Chua Wizard took advantage. I usually Respect the Japanese horses. Chryso Beryl ran in this race last year and was sort of a mid-pack runner. I expect the same from Chuo Wizard. Yeah, I mean, he, he certainly benefited when that horse didn't fire. Um, he also benefited from what I thought was a really good trip in that race, Dan. Uh, and listen, maybe he'll get another good trip in this race, sitting off uh, of a contested pace, and that'll be all it takes. But, I, I, you know, he wasn't a horse that I was in love with. His overall form's pretty good, though. One of the great international jockeys, Ryan Moore, has the mount on the number two post position to Bangkok. Winner of the Winter Derby trial at Lingfield last time out. But remember, that race is over the all weather. This horse has yet to step on dirt. It's a big question. Um, you know, obviously, he's he comes into this race in good form. He's a couple of noses away from uh, being on a three race winning streak. He's going to cut back in distance for this. He has a lot to prove, though. Now, the number three, uh, post position three, pardon me, is the number seven, Great Scott. And this is a horse that began his career on turf with OK form in England. He has raced in Saudi Arabia on dirt, and he was no match for maximum security in last year's Saudi Cup. But ever since he's returned off the layoff, he's been probably the dominant handicap horse of the local scene. What that means against these horses, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the biggest question. He has won three in a row pretty impressively, stepping way up in class for this stuff. Here's one of your favorite horses up next, the number nine, Max Player. Make a note that Mikel Barcelona will take the mount on Max Player on Saturday. Max Player won the withers, I thought, like a good thing. Distance is good for him at a mile and an eighth. He then caught a hot horse in his law. He ran fine both times. They ran him in the derby. They ran him in the Preakness. I like that they gave this horse a little bit of a layoff. I think he's a sleeper. Everyone's going to say that Tacitus is the horse that benefits from a speed duel. Isn't Max Player a horse that would equally benefit and has more upside? Yeah. I mean, of those two horses, I'd much rather have Max Player in this race. It feels like he could be an okay price. Listen, um, at the end of the day, it's all about whether he takes a step forward here. I certainly think that's possible. Um, this horse, I thought, showed a lot of potential last year as a three-year-old. And ultimately, Dan, and I'm not going to knock the connections for, for racing him the way that they did, but maybe it was just one uh, of those grade ones too many at the end of the day. I mean, they just kept coming back for more and more and more when it just felt like, you know, he was very unlikely to beat the authentics um, and the tis the laws of the world. He ran fine in some places. I actually even felt like his Preakness was okay um, considering where he was um, and the way that that race uh, developed in front of him. I don't think he had any, a fair chance at all. I'm not going to be surprised in the least if this horse comes back and takes a huge step forward here. In one of the great comebacks since Lazarus, Nick's go, a horse that won the grade one breeders futurity as a two-year-old and seemingly fell off the cliff from a form standpoint, resurrected since being transferred to the Brad Cox barn, four for four for Brad, including this win in the Pegasus World Cup, coming on the heels of his win in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. This horse has not been headed in his last four starts. He has earned big buyer speed figures in all four, and he is the innermost of the speed. Yeah, listen, I'm not going to knock him. Um, what he's done since Brad Cox has taken over is right there for everybody to see on paper. The races are fast. 
he's going to the lead in this race. Um, and then we'll just see, uh, you know, how much pressure he has to deal with and whether, um, you know, a horse like Charlatan can up his game and beat this horse. He's been very good, Dan. I'm, listen, I'm not blown away by any of his wins. I certainly, I realize he got another 108. I wasn't blown away by his Pegasus World Cup last time either. But I guess in some ways he's the horse to beat here. The great Frankie DeTore takes the mount on the number six global giant, a horse that will be racing on dirt for the first time, necked on turf in Bahrain in his most recent start. This was the last time he ran on the main track, at least, was a winner of an all-weather race at Wolverhampton, although against a much weaker field. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really know what to say about him, Dan. He's He's got some good turf form. Um, he just feels like a long shot in this race to me. The number 14 Tacitus has credentials, obviously. He won the Tampa Bay Derby and the Wood Memorial as a three-year-old. He was second in the Belmont, second in the Jim Dandy, second in the Travers, third in the Jockey Club. You're getting a theme here now with Tacitus, a horse that, even though he's made a lot of money and has run some very fast races, a bit of an underachiever. And in the Breeders' Cup Classic, he kind of clunked up for fourth behind a solid pace. He's hoping for a big pace and a big kick. I'd like him better at a mile and a quarter. Yeah, maybe I would too. I, I don't know. Listen, he can win. Um, to me, more than any other horse in the race, I, I guess it just comes down to price with him. If, he, if they wind up betting him because they think he's the third, you know, most likely winner, um, then I, I'd probably look for somebody else because I would never take this horse at any kind of a even shortest, a mildly shortest price. But if he's a good price and you feel like this is the day for him, you know, have at it. He's not for me. Now, obviously, we don't have a time form U.S. pace projector with so many foreign horses entered. But I think the way we look at it is uh, it's going to be Nick's go from the inside on the lead. Charlatan not too far behind, going a solid pace. Tacitus uh, near the tail end of the field. Why isn't Sleepy Eyes Todd getting more respect from a pace standpoint? This horse has the tactical speed to sit close, get the jump on the true closers, and might get first run on everybody. Okay, fourth in the Pegasus World Cup, just way too far back early. Yeah, agreed. I'd like to see him closer to the pace this time. Obviously, if those uh, the two favorites go fast, um, he's going to have to sit off them. Um, but he should be closer than he was last. I'm not really sure why he was so far back in the Pegasus World Cup. He was okay in that race. Um, this horse is probably underrated and a horse that you could use somewhere at a price. Here's Charlatan. He has finished first in all four lifetime starts, and he returned from a lengthy layoff to win the grade one Malibu against straight three-year-olds. This race, going seven-eighths of a mile at Santa Anita, he sat just off a of speed, a very highly regarded speed in Nashville. He blew that horse away, turning into the stretch, and he's off to the races. 107 buyer speed figure for Charlatan. Uh, you did mention, though, Mike, his slowest race today came at this distance when he finished first in one of the divisions of the Arkansas Derby. Uh, maybe he is a seven-furlong mile specialist. I have a feeling he can sit off of a horse, though. This might be the first time he's punched in the mouth, though. He's. I think this is a giant yeah. step up in class, and Nick Sko is going to be tough to go by. Yeah, listen, um, I to me, the least of my concerns with Charlton is whether he'll sit off of Nick's go. I mean, I think the reason that he wasn't favored in the Malibu last time is because they were worried he was going to get hooked um, by Nashville. And how would he deal with it? You know what? He dealt with it just fine. He let that horse go. He sat off him and he buried him at the top of the stretch. He's going to do that in here again. I think I'm, you know, mildly concerned um, about the distance. Um, you know, the Arkansas Derby's the slowest race he's, he's ever run, but he also crushed that field. Um, so I don't know, Dan, I just think he's the most talented horse in the race. I think, um, he's the most likely winner of the race. I would much rather have him than Nick's go if they're both going to be short prices, but we'll see what happens. Let's watch the seasonal debut for Military Law, who is uh, one of the better dirt horses based in Dubai, winning one of the round one of the Al Maktoum Challenge. This was a, a hardworking effort. He sat off the pace. He's driving him down. He's going to get up. He beat a solid field. The third place horse came back to win. Round two of the Al Maktoum Challenge. He's a solid horse. Uh, I'm not sure about a mile and, and, and an eighth for him, Mike. Last time was a mile. I know he's wanted a mile and a quarter. I worry about his class a little bit. That, that was my biggest concern, too. The, the things that I like about him, Dan, are um, his last four dirt races actually are all pretty good efforts. I mean, he's basically run the same race every time. Um, but they're, you know, they're pretty good efforts. And he's just a very kind of handy tactical horse. Every one of those races, when you go back and watch the replays, he gets the same trip. They just sit him in behind horses. He's very comfortable doing that. They take him to the outside in the stretch and he runs. I don't know if he's good enough to beat the two favorites in here, but I could use this horse somewhere.
So if you're making your own time form pace projector, again, we expect Nixco to be in front. We expect uh, Charlatan to be sitting off. We expect to see Sleepy Eyes Todd and Military Law maybe to be sitting in the second flight. And then, of course, Max Player and Tacitus near the back of the pack. The 12 is Sim Seer, another one making his dirt debut. This horse has been racing on turf in Bahrain. Hasn't raced on the main track since December of 2019. Beaten favorite that day. Uh, over a uh, synthetic in Ireland, a lot of class questions. Yeah, a lot of class questions, and just you don't you don't really know what you're going to get here um, as he switches to dirt for the first time. But he's going to be a big price. Mishrif, the number eleven, has faced some top horses on turf overseas. The source is a Group Two winner in France. He raced over this track last year in the Saudi Cup Derby, ran an okay second that day. Maybe this horse is a little bit of a sleeper because I think he has some upside potential. He was four to one in that champion stakes last time out against some very good horses. Yeah, you know, right. As opposed to some of the other, you know, more turf uh, meant horses, uh, this horse has an awful lot of class and he has run okay on dirt, I guess. I mean, not facing the likes of you know, a charlatan um, or a Knicks go, but I, you know, at least he ran decent enough that you feel like maybe he'll handle it. Um, these horses aren't my kinds of horses, Dan. I, I, you know, the turf horse is switching the dirt. I don't really like them that much, but this horse has some class. 15 is Derevo. The source won a group one over this surface most recently going a mile and a quarter. Again, a big ask from a class standpoint, obviously likes the dirt. Yeah. Just another one of those horses who has, you know, big questions to answer against horses like this on this surface. And the two horses we still have to discuss are Extra Elusive, a group winner on turf in England. This horse has done good work on synthetic, a complete unknown on dirt, but I respect these connections. Yeah, I do too. Um, you know, he's been versatile enough to handle the other two surfaces. We'll see if he can handle dirt. And Caro Blanco began his career in Chile, was a very popular horse over there, a group one winner on the dirt. He has now made his home in Saudi Arabia, very familiar with the surface. Not sure he's familiar with the kind of horses he's going to be facing on Saturday. His recent form is fine. Uh, he's going to face some much, much better horses here. He's going to be a huge price. Mike's going for a price in here as we take a look at our top picks for the world's richest race, the Saudi Cup. You're sticking with Max Player. Love the loyalty. It's going to be a good price. The pace is going to be solid. And I think the rest, the freshening, did him some good. I think they've been pointing to this all along. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Listen, I won't be surprised when it's a two-speed, uh, two-favorite number here, Dan. Um, of the two favorites, I much prefer Charlatan to Nick's go, but I'm going to try to beat him with Max Player and hope he fires off the layoff here. I think Charlatan is going to perhaps prove his worth here. Toughest test to date, but I like the fact that he can sit off Nick's go. He'll be gearing up in earnest on the turn, and we'll see if they hook up turning into the lane. Mike's going 9-3-10-8. I'm going 3-14-8-9. It's the Saudi Cup on Saturday. Best of luck.